So let's take a look at which way we could now create the profile curves to create the different dial surfaces. And I'm also going to break here with the way how the alias Autodesk tutorial does it, because I rather would like to have an approach where, again, I'm going to maintain my construction history. So we can start with putting down our first circle and select the circle tool. You see that the sketch uh, does not 100% vertically line up with my grid. So that's not really a big deal. I just try to put my first point down here. That is the center of my circle. And I place it with pressing the Alt key. So I snap at least vertically to the grid. And then I can go to the right, press Alt and click my second time. And then I have my first circle put down. I then just repeat this a second time. So pressing the Alt key, left click, and then going to here, pressing the Alt key and left click. Now I have the inner and outer yeah, profile curve or circle created for the dial. And let's take a look at how we could build those small gaps. And in this case, I'm going to make use of my polygon tool. And also because I know this gap is two millimeters wide, I can make use of the grid in this case again. So I turn on the polygon tool. Then I have my option key or alt key pressed. I click here once, then I click to here, and then I'm going to click up there. And those construction lines, I actually start getting really annoyed by them. So I delete them and then I'm going to turn them permanently off. To do this, you can go to general preferences, click on that small cube, and then under modeling, set the amount of guidelines to zero and click go. So this way that will not be created anymore. Then we can go back to our polyline tool. And then I'm going to continue pressing Alt key and then try to use the grid to basically place the lines always two millimeters away from each other. Because if we zoom in, one grid cube is just the distance of one millimeter. Two cubes is two millimeters, of course. Then I click on nothing because I would like to start a new line. Then I click, click, and click. Always have the Alt key pressed. So my lines are being put down using the grid. And now we basically have this nice layout and we just have to rotate it now. So we can, for example, select those four lines. Then we could go to edit and group. We'd like to group them together and then go to set pivot, zoom in, and then left mouse button and press Alt. I'm going to snap the pivot point of that group now to the center. And when we have that one done, I can go and select the object, go into rotate. And you can see that I have to rotate it along the x-axis. So I should be able to type in 45, comma, 0, comma, 0. Let's see if that works. And there it is. So this way it's a lot easier to quickly put down the geometry and then later use a rotation tool instead of trying to draw those perfectly using the grid so those lines are 45 degree. And now we have to create an arc that starts at this point and then goes over to this point. 
which basically defines the curved surface of the style when, for example, we take a look at it from the top. So something like this. So how do we start sketching this one? For this tool, we can use the arc and I'm going to press Alt or Option and then click on this point where the grid meets and actually make my arc start exactly where, for example, the outer circle has one of the key points. Now I would like this arc to be created 45 degree, uh, sorry, 90 degree rotated or basically parallel to your view or perpendicular onto this ring. So I cannot really do this while being in the front view. So I can go into top view and then maybe let's take a look at where my button is. So the button is here. So I know I have to start sketching it this direction. So then maybe for a moment, let's go into perspective and see I have one, two, three, four. So the fourth point. So one, two, three here. This is basically my other point on the inner circle. So I have to maybe see how many points or grids I have in between. One, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe pressing the Alt key and clicking here. And then that's the midpoint that defines the curvature of the arc. And then I hold my Alt key and click here. And that should be, and as you can see, the last point uh, and also the point of the circle. So this way, by using different views, I created the arc so that it starts and ends perfectly on those two rings. Because those two rings with this profile, I can then use for the bi-rail tool.